Straight from the middle of Disney's 12 principles of animation is timing, which may very well be the key principle of animation because action or performance just doesn't make sense without good timing. One could say that timing is everything. One could name an animation tutorial that too. Let's first talk about frame rate. If you've been animating 6 to 8 frames per second, try bringing it up to 12. It just looks so much better and is needed for most of what we're going to talk about here to actually work. Sometimes 24 frames per second. Sometimes. The basic principle of timing concerns how many moves or frames it takes to make something happen. So if this car is going to drive across frame, try using a stopwatch to time how long it takes. Round it down to allow for the time it takes to push the button. So one and a half seconds times 12. That's 18 frames at 12 frames per second. The next principle is spacing, or how far it moves in every frame. Divide the distance by the number of frames. To make the movement smooth, use precise measurements, like using a ruler for each move. In Dragon Frame, you can use the Draw Over tool to draw a line covering the distance and split it up into 16 moves. When animating, carefully move the object the exact amount for each frame, and the result is a smooth move. But a real car would ease in at the beginning and ease out at the end. You can add that in Dragon Frame by adjusting the tangents. Or if you're using a ruler, start with the smallest move you can manage and then double the distance each time to steadily build speed. So now the car has an ease in and ease out. Much better. Let's try it again at 24 frames per second. So much smoother, and if you're just sliding objects, it's worth the extra 20 minutes. Now let's talk about how to time things for impact. Like here, where she needs to hit people hard enough to move them in contrast to the gentler hand move. Let's try a car crash, animating the cars moving steadily towards each other and colliding. It's weak because the frame before the impact is smaller than the previous moves. The impact will be greater if the vehicle speeds up and the frame before the impact has them moving the greatest distance. Here the cart eases out just a little to create a sudden stop, enhanced by having the cart swing as a secondary action. These impacts need to feel powerful. For contrast, the final impacts are gentler to feel like it's coming to rest. Let's apply these principles to a performance, a head slap, like one of these. Wow, I could have had a V8. If the move is too slow, it's unclear what he's doing. If it's too fast, he can knock himself out. Reference can be useful here. Record the action and then count the frames. Keep in mind that the video is recorded at 30 frames per second, so some math is needed to convert it to 12 frames per second. But it's an easy way to plan out the timing in an exposure sheet, either right in Dragon Frame or on paper. Follow that timing and the impact is believable. This impact feels powerful because the contact frame shows a big move in the reindeer. The next principle of timing is rhythm. This is the time between hits, accents, or beats. Like as a ball bounces, it's the number of frames between bounces. So let's apply that to pose to pose action. Notice that the character comes to rest and holds every time they make a move so that the pose or facial expression can be read. There is a rhythm to the movement. If there is no pauses, the expressions don't have time to read. Now there are pauses and we can see the expressions, but everything is moving and holding the same each time. It's best to break up the timing. Some moves are faster than others. Some holds are longer than others. Reference can help, but also just consider the energy of the move, like a slower move for a casual turn and a snappier move for a surprise take. Robot Chicken really pushes the energy of snappy pose-to-pose -pose animation with quick moves to get into held poses, while Henry Selleck leans more towards flowing smooth moves to get into each pose. But they still have to go into moving holds to fully read. When animating to music, the rhythm and the timing is based on the soundtrack. I have a tutorial on animating the music, but the basic idea is to determine which frame the beats occur on, note those frames in an exposure sheet, and then time the animation to hit accents on those beats. As you get more advanced, a nice touch is to offset the timing of a move. With a head turn, timing can be offset by having the eyes move first, then the head, and then the body. Offsets make movement feel more natural. So as you watch animated movies, look for these principles of timing. Study both animation and live action frame by frame to see how things move, and work those observations into your animation. Thanks for watching.